Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcacciani here. I wanted to do a quick video with you guys. Can low bile acids impact your health? So can it impact your digestion? Can it impact your health overall? Patient story from this week. Also, another clinician friend of mine called me from out of the country. He has a big issue, a lot of pain up in the gallbladder area, having lots of bloating, lots of lots of brain fog, lots of fatigue, and he ran a stool test. One of the things that came back was Giardia. So Giardia is a parasite infection. Sometimes that can create stress and be a big gallbladder stressor. Now, I had another patient this week I'm excited to, to tell you guys about. Had a lot of chronic health issues, a lot of brain fog, a lot of fatigue, a lot of poor digestion, and one of the big things that we saw move the needle was improving bile acid digestion. And when you do that, we have to do it multiple ways. It's amazing. I, I never cease to amaze me when you deal with foundational issues. If someone's not breaking down their food adequately, a lot of times you're going to be missing fat soluble vitamins, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals. You're also going to be potentially having malnutrition. When you don't break things down well, that also tends to create nausea. That can potentially lower your appetite. Now you're not eating enough because your appetite's out of whack. And then now you're having nutritional issues because you're not getting enough food in. And then, of course, over time, the more, the more the food is not broken down well, it can ferment, it can rancidify, it can putrefy. So these are key things to look at when you have chronic health issues. So a couple of things out of the gate, right? Bile is very important. Bile is antimicrobial. It's, mild, it's mildly acidic. That's why it's called a bile acid, right? So it's mildly acidic. So it's really helpful. It helps emulsify that fat, helps break it down. Think of greasy pan, Dawn dish soap. It helps emulsify. It allows us to break it down and absorb it. Fat isn't just used for energy. Every single cell in our in our every single cell in our body has a membrane, a lipid bilayer, two two layers, and that's going to be fat based. We need healthy fat. Our brain's seventy to eighty percent fat. Most of our hormones are cholesterol based and cholesterol and fat for the most part tends to come together. It's very rare that you just find cholesterol by itself. You're almost always getting it from animal products and there's going to be a bunch of fat along with it most of the time. So it's really important. Fat's important for your hormones. It's important for your brain health. 70 to 80% of your brain is going to be fat. Hormones need that healthy cholesterol and fat. So if we don't have good, healthy gallbladder slash bile function, we're not going to break that fat down. That's going to impact our hormones. That's going to impact fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. That's going to impact brain health, not getting those nutrients up there. Also, anytime we create inflammation in the gut, food not being broken down, not creating that nice pH, which then the pH is too high, it starts to make it so bugs grow and starts to impact the gut health and create gut permeability or gut inflammation. The more we do that, the more we make it so foods don't get broken down, we make it so bugs can exist at higher levels, we create nutrient deficiencies, that's going to overactivate our immune system because guess what? 80% of your immune cells are in your gut. And if you are overstimulating, overreacting those immune cells, you're going to have lots of problems. And when your immune system is overactive, guess what? When you have inflammation in the gut, it's going to create inflammation in the brain. That's why when you have gut issues, it's so easy to create brain issues, brain fog, energy issues, mood issues. That's why if you look at, for instance, H. pylori, right, one of the major side effects of H. pylori, according to many scientific articles, is actually mood issues because the gut-brain connection is strong, right? You can go look at Dr. Perlmutter's book, Brain Maker, or Dr. Amen has a couple books on this topic as well, is a strong gut-brain connection. And the bacteria in your gut has a major effect on inflammation. So we want beneficial bacteria. We need beneficial bacteria, but that happens through good dietary choices, but it also happens through having good, healthy um, digestion. If we don't break our foods down well, that food's going to rancidify, it's going to putrefy. Now, we could have potentially have stones, right? We could have high levels of estrogens causing bile to flow to be more stagnant or kind of dudgy, if you will, and that can create stones. So if you're a female, you're on birth control pills, you have high levels of estrogen or insulin, guys could be too, but you see it more with women, that can create that flow issue and that can create stones. People that are on low um, calorie diets or low fat diets, right? You need bile, you need um, fat to trigger cholecystokinin, which is a neuropeptide released in the small intestine. That triggers the gallbladder to release. So if we do not have enough good, healthy fat in our diet, we will not trigger that gallbladder to release and squeeze. And if we don't squeeze it, those gall, 
those gall, essentially that bile salts can crystallize and form stones. It's very possible. So we have to wring out that gallbladder so we can actually release that bile, which is now concentrated. That will help now emulsify the fat. We got to look at food allergens. Sometimes I see certain food allergens in the paleo community like pork, like coffee, onions, some even meats could potentially be an issue. So we have to keep an eye on that. There's certain diets, certain foods that we will restrict. We'll put my article here from um, a couple of years back uh, on a blog post about the different foods. And you can take a look at that article. We'll put that down below in the notes um, section by tomorrow. You guys will have it up there. So take a look at that. Um, hydrochloric acid is very important. We talk about like bile or giving bile supporting nutrients, like bile supporting nutrients would be like phosphatidylcholine, taurine, uh, ox bile itself. We may give things to help with bile secretion and flow like dandelion or beetroot, right? Artichoke. These are really good for flow. So it's good to do both because you don't know if there's a stone. So sometimes you want to hit it from both sides. You may also want to give more enzymes like protease, which will help more on the fat, but lipase to help the bile. So you don't need as much bile to work on the digestive side. And the big trigger for bile production is hydrochloric acid. We need good acid that triggers the pH. That nice pH activates pepsinogen to pepsin. That's your major proteolytic enzyme. That nice low pH is going to trigger cholecystic kinin release when that food gets all that mixed up kind goes from the stomach to the small intestine. That cholecystic kinin causes that gallbladder to contract and wring out like a sponge that's full of water. And then you get this bile that's 15 to 20 times more concentrated than if it was just dripping from your common hepatic duct. So really important. Um, it's easy to get overwhelmed or to think, oh my gosh, I have this crazy issue and I have to do this crazy protocol. Always start with the foundation that's so easy to kind of um, move past that and forget it and get really into the granularity, into the nuance of everything. So hope you guys appreciate that. Again, products that I'm going to use, HCL, I'm going to use bile support and bile thinning agents. We're going to use enzymes too. We're definitely going to look at bugs because bugs can impact and create stress in the gut, which then can make your parasympathetic nervous system drop. And then you make less enzymes, less juices, less bile as well. So keep all that in the back of your head. I'll put links for the products that I personally use with my patients and myself put the different tests that I'd like as well for looking at the gut because we can also test the adequate too, which is helpful. But sometimes that's not enough. You have to look at the patient clinically and try things and see how they feel as well. So keep an eye on that, guys. If you want to dive in deeper, um, there'll be links down below where you can reach out to myself, my staff, our coordinates are below, and you can reach out if you want to dial in on the functional medicine side and really get to the root cause. All right, guys, have a phenomenal day. Great chatting with you. Have a good one. Bye, y'all.